Yeah. Please fill me with the Ruach HaKodesh, that I may speak your written words with boldness to those who listen. I ask all these things in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. We'll start with the Shema. Listen and obey. Children of Yah, pay careful attention and respond. yod heh vod -Hey is our power and authority. Yahava works in unity with himself. And you shall act upon your love to Yahweh with your power and authority, with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness that you have. Galatians chapter 3. You stupid Galatians, who put you under a spell? Before your very eyes, Yeshua the Messiah was clearly portrayed as having been put to death as a criminal. I want you to know from you just this one thing. Did you receive the Spirit by legalistic observance of Torah commands or by trusting in what you heard and being faithful to it? Are you that stupid? Having begun with the Spirit's power, did you think you could reach the goal under your own power? Have you suffered so much for nothing? If that's the way you think, your, your suffering certainly will have been for nothing. What about God, who supplies you with the Spirit and works miracles among you? Does He do it because of your legalistic observance of Torah commands, or because you trust in what you heard and are faithful to it? It was the same with Abraham. He trusted in God and was faithful to Him, and that was credited to His account as righteousness. Be assured, then, that it is those who live by trusting and being faithful who are really children of Abraham. Also, the Tanakh foresees, foreseeing that God would consider the Gentiles righteous when they live by trusting and being faithful, told the good news to Abraham in advance by saying, in connection with you, all the nations will be blessed. So then, those who rely on trusting and being faithful, are blessed along with Abraham, who trusted and was faithful. For everyone who depends on legalistic observance of Torah commands lives under a curse, since it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not keep on doing everything written in the scroll of the Torah. Now it is evident that no one comes to be declared righteous by God through legalism since the person who is righteous will attain life by trusting and being faithful. Furthermore, legalism is not based on trusting and being faithful, but on a misuse of the text that says anyone who does these things will attain life through them. The Messiah redeemed us from the curse pronounced on the Torah by becoming cursed on our behalf for the Tanakh says, everyone who hangs on a tree, on a stake, comes under a curse. Yeshua the Messiah did this so that in union with him, the Gentiles might receive the blessing announced to Abraham, so that through trusting and being faithful, we might receive what was promised, namely, the Spirit. Brothers, let us make an analogy from everyday life. When someone swears an oath, no one else can set aside, set it aside or add to it. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his seed. It doesn't say, and to seeds, as if to many. On the contrary, it speaks of one and to your seed. And this one is the Messiah. Here is what I'm saying. The legal part of the Torah, which came into being 430 years later, does not nullify an oath sworn by God as to abolish the promise. For if the inheritance comes from the legal part of the Torah, it no longer comes from a promise, but God gave it to Abraham through a promise. So then, why the legal part of the Torah? It was added in order to create transgressions until the coming of the seed about whom the promise had been made. Moreover, it was handed down through angels and a mediator. Now, a mediator implies more than one, but 
God is one. Does this mean that the legal part of the Torah stands in opposition to God's promises? Heaven forbid. Or if the legal part of the Torah which God gave which God gave, had itself the power to give life, then righteousness really would have come by legalistically following such a Torah. But instead, the Tanakh shuts up everything under sin, so that what had been promised might be given on the basis of Yeshua, the Messiah's trusting faithfulness to those who continue to be trustingly faithful. Now, before the time of this trusting faithfulness came, we were imprisoned by subjection to the system which results from perverting the Torah into legalism, kept under guard until this yet-to-come trusting faithfulness would be revealed. Accordingly, the Torah functioned as a custodian until the Messiah came, so that we might be declared righteous on the ground of trusting and being faithful. But now the time... But now that... Now that the time this trusting faithfulness has come, we are no longer under a custodian. For in union with the Messiah, you are all children of God through this trusting faithfulness. Because as many as you, because as many of you as were immersed into the Messiah have clothed yourself with the Messiah, in whom there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free man, neither male nor female, for in union with the Messiah Yeshua, you are all one. Also, if you, being, if you belong to the Messiah, you are seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. Deep. Real deep. Shaul pulls a lot from the Tanakh in this short chapter. First, he pulls from Genesis 15.6. He trusted in God and was faithful to him, and that was credited to his account as righteousness. Genesis, way back in Genesis, Genesis 12. Genesis 12, 6. Abraham passed through the land to the place called Shechem. To the oak of Mori. The Canaanite were there in the land. Oh, that definitely wasn't it. 15 6. <laughs> okay, chapter 15, verse 6. He believed in Yudhevate and he credited it to him as righteousness. Amen. Next, in connection with you, all the nations will be blessed. Genesis 12.3. Oh. Genesis 12.3. I will bless those who bless you, but I will curse anyone who curses you, and by you all, flam all the families of the earth will be blessed. All the families. Amen. In connection with you. Next, cursed is everyone who does not keep on doing everything written in the scroll of the Torah. Deuteronomy 27.26. Deuteronomy 27, 26. A curse on anyone who does not confirm the words of this Torah by putting them into practice. All the peoples are to say, Amen. Next, the person who is righteous will attain life by trusting and being faithful. Habakkuk 2, 4. Habakkuk 2, 4. Is this little book two four? Look at the proud; he is inwardly not upright, but the righteous will attain life through trusting faithfulness. Ooh. Next, anyone who does these things will attain life through them. Leviticus eighteen five. Five. You are to observe my laws and rulings. If a person does them, he will have life through them. I am Yudhe Vade. Everyone who hangs from a stake comes under a curse. Deuteronomy 21, 22, and 23. Deuteronomy 21, 22, 
22 and 23. If someone has committed a capital crime and is put to death, then hung on a tree, his body is not to remain all night on the tree. You must bury him the same day, because a person who has been hanged has been cursed by God so that you will not defile your land, which yad heh vad heh your God is giving you to inherit. Hmm. Lastly, and to your seed. Seed. It says twice. So we got Genesis 12, 7. Back to Genesis 12, 7. yad heh vad heh appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants literally to your seed, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to yad heh who had appeared to him. I think we're going further. 1315. Again, 1315. All the land you see, all the land you see, I will give to you and your descendants, that is literally to your seed forever. 17.7. We're saying this multiple times. Amen. I am establishing my covenant between me and you, along with your descendants after you, generation after generation, as an everlasting covenant to be God for you and for your descendants after you. Lastly, 24.7. Four times. yod heh vod -Heh, the God of heavens, who took away me from my father's house and away from the land I was born in, who spoke to me and swore to me, I will give this land to your descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and you are to bring a wife for my son from there. Amen. How can we learn to love our creator, yod heh vod -Heh, after reading Galatians 3? We can learn deeply today rainy, stormy afternoon in downtown Dallas. We can know that Sha'ul, chapter 3, we can know that Shep, we can know Sha, we can know that Sha'ul does not hold back with the Galatians. Straight up calls them stupid. When they appeared to be under a spell, thinking their legalistic observance of Torah commands had anything to do with receiving the Spirit. Anyone can Reach the goal only by what Yeshua did and his works. As with Abraham, it is by our trust in the good news and our faithfulness to it that delivers us. Those who are really children of Abraham are those who live by trusting and being faithful. Know that the good news was told to Abraham in advance. Example, Genesis 12, 3. In connection with you, all the nations will be blessed. It is by trusting and, faith and being faithful. Abraham was faithful and trusted. Know that no person ever will ever be declared righteous by Yah by way of legalistic observance of Torah. Trust that what was said in Habakkuk 2.4, the person who is righteous will attain life by trusting and being faithful. Trust that the Messiah redeemed us from the curse pronounced in the Torah. Trust that Yeshua became cursed so that we in union with Yeshua might receive the blessings announced to Abraham so that through trusting and being faithful, we might receive what was promised, namely the Spirit. Trust that God gave his promise to Abraham, which was 430 years earlier than the Torah. Know and trust that the Tanakh shuts everything up under sin, so that on the basis of Yeshua the Messiah's trusting faithfulness to those who continue to be trustingly faithful, trust that we might be declared righteous, that is a right standing before Yah, on the ground of trusting and being faithful. For in union with the Messiah, we are children of God through trusting faithfulness. In union with the Messiah, we are one. Also, if we belong to the Messiah, we are seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. How can we love others as Yeshua loves us? We can proclaim to those around us that in order to be declared in a right standing relationship with a holy God named Yah, 
in union with Yeshua the Messiah, and our trusting faithfulness in him is the only way. Produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, humility, self-control. How can we bear one another's burdens? We can aim to do whatever it takes to be in unity with each other. Mm. End with the Arianica blessing. yud He vad He will kneel before you presenting gifts, and he will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahava will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you, bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, friendship. Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.